Hi, I'm Jen Goss, and I'm on staff here at Newspring, and I'd like to welcome you to 252 Online Theater. Welcome to 252 Theater's online service, a ministry of New Spring Church in Wichita, Kansas. Fun lives here, so get ready to have a great time and learn about a great big idea. That's right. A big idea is something God wants to do inside you to change the world around you. The biggest ideas are the big three. We hope after joining us online, you'll know that you can treat others the way you want to be treated, make the wise choice, and trust God no matter what. You'll get to experience fun games, skits, worship, and of course, a powerful story straight out of God's Word. More than a video, this is your chance to be a part of something amazing. So get your popcorn, crank up the volume, and get ready for incredible fun. It all starts in three, two, one. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Well, I am so excited to be here because all month long we've been talking about different parts of the Christmas story. If you were here two weeks ago, we talked about um, how with God anything is possible. We talked about Zachariah and Elizabeth and how they had a baby. Does anybody remember who that baby was in Elizabeth's tummy? Not Jesus. It was John the Baptist. He grew up to be the greatest prophet there ever was. And then... If you were here last week, we talked about Mary and Joseph and how they learned that Mary was going to have a baby because the angel Gabriel came to them and told them. And we learned that sometimes we just have to tell God, yes, I will, when he asks us to do something, even when we don't understand. So today, I get the privilege of talking to you guys about the greatest gift there ever was. But before we do that, I have a little story for you. When I was younger, I had a friend give me a gift. Who likes getting gifts? Yeah, I do too. And this one, I was so surprised. My friend gave me a gift and I wasn't expecting it. And it was so beautiful. It was probably about the size of this Bible. And it was beautifully wrapped with all the pretty paper and a bow on it. And I remember sitting down so excited, like, what could this be? So I started taking the wrapping paper off. I threw it on the ground, you know, because that's how you take wrapping paper off. You just rip it and throw it. And then I looked at the box, I turned it around, and it was not what I expected. It was a box of tuna helper. Yuck! Do you guys know what tuna is? You guys weren't expecting me to say that, were you? <laughs> it is stinky fish. Some of you might like to eat it. I don't care for it. So I thought my friend was playing a joke on me. I was not very happy. I didn't like that kind of joke. But you know, I thought, okay, maybe I should open the box and see what was inside. So I opened the box, stuck my hand in, and I was reaching around trying to feel what was in there. It felt like a bunch of filler. So I started taking out like tissue paper and I was like, okay, he just gave this big prank on me. There's nothing in here. But all of a sudden, at the bottom of the box, I felt something different. And so I grabbed it out, and it was nicely wrapped. And I was like, okay. I took the paper off. And do you know what was inside? <laughs> that would be fun, wouldn't it? It was a beautiful pair of diamond earrings. And I almost threw that box out. Could you imagine if I would have thrown it in the trash? Sometimes the greatest gifts come in the most unexpected ways, right? So that's kind of what our story is about today. You see how we have all these different presents up here. And these presents are going to help us tell our story. Everybody say Luke. 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 So the, our story is in the book of Luke today. And we're going to talk about Mary and Joseph. Back, so think back, back in their time. We're back in the Roman Empire. And I think that makes it time for me to open my first present. Do you guys give me, a, give me a drum roll on your legs. All right. What do you think's inside? Oh, it's a crown. 
What do you guys think the crown is for? Can you think of some ideas? Those are all good ideas. Okay, let me tell you what it was for. It's kind of big for my head. All right, listen up. So back in, back in the Roman time, there was a king or an emperor, and his name was Caesar Augustus. Can you guys say Caesar Augustus? That's kind of a hard name, isn't it? Well, he was in charge of many nations, and he made a decree, which is just kind of like a rule, a rule that we have to follow. And he made a decree that all the people have to go back to their homeland in order to get counted for and to pay taxes and some of these boring grown-up things. But because he said it, everyone needed to obey, okay? So I think we're ready for our next present. Can I get a drum roll? Let's see, wonder what it is. I didn't hear anything. <gasps> it's a map. A treasure map. <laughs> it's a map. Okay, so sometimes we don't use maps like this today. Oh, thank you. Sometimes we don't use map like, maps like this today. A lot of times we have it on our phone, right? Or your parents might get from one place to the other and their phone might just tell them where to go. But back in the day, they didn't have phones, so they might have used a map or something similar to this. And this represents the trek that Mary and Joseph had to make. So if we remember, who was this guy's name? Caesar, Caesar Augustus. He said everyone had to travel back to the land of their family. And so Mary and Joseph lived in a town called Nazareth. And Joseph was a part of King David's family line. And King David's town was Bethlehem. That was the land where he was from. So Mary and Joseph had to travel from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem. But you know, when we travel today, sometimes we take a car or an airplane when we go like maybe on vacation or we go to our grandparents' house or something like that. Back then, they didn't have that. They had to walk. So Mary and Joseph had to walk all the way, or ride a donkey maybe, all the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And do you know how long it took? It took almost one week of walking. Again? How did I do that? One week of walking. And what was crazy about that is that it wasn't an easy trek because Mary, remember, had a baby in her tummy. And she had to walk all that way. But eventually, they made it to Bethlehem. And that leads us to our next present. Can I get a drum roll? Let's see. Can I hear anything? Oh, this one's a little heavier. I wonder what's inside. A sheep. Oh, that's so silly. Oh, I hear some of you might know why there's a sheep. Okay. So... <laughs> Everybody, I need you to quiet down because this is where it gets kind of serious. I know the sheep is kind of funny, but here's the thing. Mary and Joseph made it to Bethlehem, but when they got there, they had to find a place to stay. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. They had to find a place to stay. Now, if you guys go on vacation, your parents probably already know what hotel they're going to stay at, or maybe they got an Airbnb house or something. And they know, you know, what room. They have a room already reserved. But back then, they couldn't do that. So when they got to the, to the town of Bethlehem, they had to find a place. And it was so busy because, remember, all the people from the nations had to go back to their hometown. So they got there, and there was no room for Mary and Joseph anywhere. And then Mary says, Joseph, it's time. It's time for me to have the baby. And they didn't have a place to stay. So one of the innkeepers, and an innkeeper is kind of like a manager of a hotel, but an, the innkeeper said, well, I don't have any room in the inn, but I do have a stable in the back. And you guys could stay with the animals. So that's what the sheep represents. Because Mary and Joseph had to stay with the animals. They had to sleep with the animals. And it's probably pretty smelly, huh? And you know, in the stable is where we get our greatest gift. The greatest gift there ever was. You think? I think this one's too big for me to shake. But this is my favorite one. It's baby Jesus. 
He was born in a stable. And they lied him in a manger. Do you know what a manger is? It's kind of like a feeding trough for animals. It was kind of stinky. They had to get all the food out because they didn't have anywhere else to lay him. Totally unfit for a king. You know, when I look at baby Jesus, it reminds me that King Jesus came to this earth and he was born a baby just like you and just like me. Do you know he grew up and he was seven years old, eight years old, nine years old, just like each one of you? He was even my years old, okay? I will be 32 this month. <laughs> And you know what's special, what makes him the greatest gift? Is that he grew up, he had brothers and sisters and cousins and everything, and he never did anything wrong. He never got in a fight with his brothers or sisters or hurt anybody. He was perfect for his whole life. And then when he got older, he taught us all about his father, God, and how to live our lives. And then one day, he died on the cross to pay for our sins so that we could go to heaven and be with him forever. And it all started with a baby lying in a manger in a stinky stable. <laughs> you know, this Christmas season, it's so fun. We all get so many presents. There's so many lights and fun things to do, gingerbread houses and whatever family traditions you guys might have. But I want you to remember why all those things are happy and joyful and good things. The greatest gift and the reason that we celebrate Christmas is because of Jesus. Now, if you guys have any questions about that, about why he's the greatest gift. You can always ask me or Mr. Cody, or you can ask your small group leader, your parents, your grandparents. And we'd love to tell you why he is the greatest gift. And to help you celebrate this Christmas season, King Jesus. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pray for you guys. You guys could bow your heads. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for all the children in this room. Thank you for bringing them here to learn about you and baby Jesus. Thank you for loving us enough to send your son to make a way for us in heaven. Thank you for loving us. Help us to remember to celebrate Jesus this Christmas season. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today for 252 Theater Online. We hope you had a great time learning about the big idea. We'd love to get in touch with you. With your parents' help, you can visit our Facebook or Instagram page to message us any questions or prayer requests. If you would like a daily devotional that goes along with what you just heard, click the link in the description box below to download a God Time card that you can do at home. We have incredible fun like this every weekend, so make sure you click the subscribe button so you can see when our newest videos are posted. If you have younger or older brothers and sisters, we have amazing weekly content for their age group too. And of course, our doors are open every weekend for you to experience 252 Theater in person. Have a great week putting this big idea into practice, and we'll see you again next week.